Carrie Lorenz is a dynamic communicator with an incredible story. As the first female F-14 Tomcat pilot, she was a pioneer in military aviation. She flew missions all over the world, taking off and landing aboard naval carriers, the most challenging aviation environment in existence. Her groundbreaking path to success as an aviator was filled with unexpected twists that tested and proved her resilience and determination. The story of her journey to the cockpit continues to inspire and empower audiences around the world. Uh, you were one of the first women to fly the F-14, the Tomcat. When you are implementing a policy that changes a perceived cultural norm, it will require very strong leadership to make that be successful. Every time you take the opportunity to stare fear in the face, you become stronger, you become more courageous, and you develop a lot more confidence. So don't be afraid to fail. Failure will happen. It's what you do with it that defines you. My name is Carrie Lorenz, call sign Vixen. I know, I'll let that one rumble around in your melons a little bit. Imagine the conversation when I got to tell my mom and dad what that call sign was. I think it was really one of their prouder parenting moments. <laughs> and the first day you show up, they give you a stack of books that's this high. Higher than any college stack of books I ever had. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, there's no way, there's no way. And the instructor walks in and says, I know some of you may be in shock. I'm not sure what kind of, kind of uh, students you were. You will know every bit of information in that in the next six weeks. If you don't think you can know that, you can leave now. We had guys that left. And I'm thinking, you can't leave. You haven't even opened the book yet. What if it's like pictures and we're good? <laughs> A catalyst is somebody who can make change happen who can really accelerate people and get them to where they need to go faster. It's all about speed. Speed is life, but we need to get there together. People are drawn to organizations that are on a mission. People want to be a part of a team that is on the fast track to somewhere, not just being good enough. So this fear of failure is crippling, and it's the number one thing that paralyzes people and it leads to us passing up really valuable opportunities because we're so afraid to fail. But when we can work through this, when we work through this fear of failure and really shake through that fear and understand that these are opportunities for success, what it does is it releases that hold and that titanic fear that we have that is paralyzing, that stops us from doing things, that keeps us in that safe and normal place and doesn't allow us to break through those barriers and outside of our comfort zone. What I like to say to people is that if you're not walking around professionally with that little bit, you know, that kind of tight feeling in your throat where you maybe even have a little verp there where you're like, ooh, I'm really scared about this, then you're not pushing yourself enough. There were a lot of specific points that she gave that can help anybody uh, break through the barriers, do something for the first time, get through a tough situation. I wanted to make sure that if I was in the position that I was assigned a jet slot, that there was no doubt in anybody's mind that I got it because I was qualified. The combat exclusion clause was in place where women were not allowed to fly any combat aircraft. So I am two years into my training already, two full years post-college, when I'm in this, in this uh, commanding officer's office. And the detailer says, they haven't lifted the combat exclusion clause yes, yet, and we have no place for you. I was crushed. I was crushed. Everything that I worked for for those previous two years, it was all I could do to hold it together. I go back into this weapons briefing, and remember, only girl, 45 men, I'm doing everything I can not to cry. I went into the commanding officer and I said, okay, so listen, I've thought about this. And I go, here are what our options are. So maybe a little bit of chutzpah, but I go, not flying is not an option for me, so we need to find a third way. Oftentimes we are told no. What's the first answer? No, no, we can't do that. No, that's not how we do it around here. No, we've never done it that way, it's not gonna change. Well, you know what? Sometimes you gotta just keep pushing on the system because the system told me for years, there's no place for you here. And you have to keep pushing and saying, I'm gonna find a way, I'm gonna find a way to make this work out. Sometimes you just need to step out and do it. 
You need to get your gear on, get in the cockpit, and no matter how many people tell you no, or that it can't be done, or we're not doing this, we don't do that here, go out and do it. Make this stuff happen. We have synergy and strength when we go out together. It's a force multiplier. I can't see that space behind me, right? It's a blind spot. It's really hard when I have all that gear on, you know, my big long draft neck, to turn around and look right behind me where somebody can sneak into that blind spot. So we're constantly jockeying position so we can back each other up and we can provide uh, support for each other, mutual support. So think how you can do that in your day-to-day -day environment. Check and cover somebody else's blind spots so you can really work together and get to your target. She always has a wingman. She never goes up alone. So even though, even though I'm helping one customer, I have an entire um, region, entire building, entire workforce behind me helping me to help that customer. I'm not flying a $45 million plane, but I can use the items that she said. If you are not in the game, and you don't have your head on, and you think just good enough is gonna keep you there, it will not. It doesn't keep us alive behind the boat, and it doesn't keep our businesses going and growing either. We spend a lot of time planning and briefing, but more often than not, people think a meeting is like a brief, and they'll get their team together, you get your team together, and you say, okay, this is what we're gonna do, this is what we're gonna do, and everyone's like, yeah, high five, we all know what we're gonna do, and you walk out into the hallway, and everyone's like, what are we doing again? What do you, do, no, 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 let's just start and we'll see how it goes, right? So that's what we want to avoid. We operate with a singular purpose, focus, and discipline. If we lose sight of what that is, if we start getting off track with different priorities, we will lose what it is we are actually trying to accomplish. You know, in aviation, we didn't get to pick each other as, as squadron mates or as teammates. In your departments and your divisions, you don't get to do that either. But you need to come together and you need to have that singular purpose and that focus and discipline and get people fired up. And there was another female aviator that crashed. I was grounded. I am over in Abu Dhabi, over in the Gulf, and I am pulled out of my cockpit. And I had to fight my way back into the cockpit. Uh, and after almost a year and a half of investigations, they found that I should have never been taken out of the cockpit and I truly was qualified and I was allowed to fly again. But it was the darkest period of my life and it was absolutely devastating because everything that I worked for and worked towards was taken away from me unexpectedly based off of some extraneous thing that I wasn't even attached to. And I fought it with every ounce of my being, not only just for myself though, I fought it for the people who went before me, and I fought it for the women who are coming after me. If we all work together, if you think about how you can really break those barriers and lead with courage, you can truly inspire and elevate and empower people to achieve things that they even never thought was possible. Thank you very much for your time today. You guys are an awesome audience, and have a great rest of your conference. Thank you.